Good morning. Well, I am your teacher this morning, uh, and we're into P, and our topic is uh, prayer in the life of Christ. And we'll start with a word of prayer and then go into the lesson. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you're our Father in heaven. You love us. You laid out a plan for us to be with you forever through your Son. You set that in motion. You laid out the earth and the universe and everything that we see and observe. You created everything. You're worthy of our praise, and we are so blessed that you're our Father. If there's anything that, that we've done that would separate us from you, we pray about that now. We ask for your forgiveness, to, and we pray that you'll restore our relationship with you and that you will forgive us of those things. Thank you for giving us this time through our elders and through your word to be together with others of like-minded faith who believe in you as, as each of us does. And, and we seek this morning to encourage each other in prayer. So be with us this morning and help us encourage each other with our words and, and our thoughts on this really important topic. And these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So be with me this morning. Um, it's been a couple months since I've stood in front of a group of people with the intention of teaching. <laughs> uh, I'm a public school teacher, by the way. Um, it's a little bit uh, different crowd than um, those uh, sophomores that I'm used to. Um, I won't have to, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Although, you know, they fall asleep too, so we'll all be on guard. <clears throat> all right, so prayer. The small groups have kind of hit this topic recently, which is good. And I'm going to do something that I don't think I've ever done when I've taught uh, here at church. And um, that would be, I'm going to ask you guys a question right off the top. This is a, a study question. I know the answers. You should know the answers too. So uh, let's see if you can get this. Um, what are the three critical elements of prayer? The three critical elements of prayer. We covered this in a recent small group. Three things. Praise, absolutely, praise. That's the middle component. Gratitude, that's certainly important, but it's not one of the three. There's something, praise, and something else. So, sorry, you got it wrong. Humility is an important thing, and I think it, it, I would place that under the first component. Yes, sir, Steve. Okay. All right. We're, getting, we're in the ballpark. About this. Um, being thankful, absolutely. Um, I have one. I have several. I have numerous of these. And um, one very important uh, one is currently 
out in California, and I'm really quite amazed that I'm here this morning on time. I was actually early, but this person is very important to me. Love? Oh, I certainly do. Absolutely. You betcha. Relationship. I have a relationship with this woman out in, currently in L.A. She's my wife. Um, and when we prayed this morning, uh, we have a relationship with our Father in heaven. So the first component was relationship. If, I think Jody said, if there's no relationship, then why are we doing it? Why are we praying? Uh, so relationship, praise, praise God for who he is and what he's done. He laid out the, everything that there is to, to know. He is, he, if there's uh, physics and um, all that stuff that I really don't understand, he laid it out. Okay, he created it. You know? Einstein might have you know, sharpened a pencil and worked some things out, but God's the one who established it. So he's certainly worthy of praise. Um, and then the last component. I think we got a little close to this with humility. What do we do? When we do something wrong, we repent and we confess, right? So that third component was confession. Okay. And when you look at uh, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray, well, all those elements are there. The relationship with God, Father in heaven, the uh, praise for who he is, and then the confession of our sins. All those elements are there. So, all right, all right. Not bad for a Sunday morning. Pretty good. So what I intend to do is go through uh, Christ's... Uh, Prayer habits, right? How, when, when did he pray? How did he pray? What did he pray for? And we'll go through that and um, the scripture here that I have before me. And um, then uh, maybe in the last uh, part, we'll um, explore what makes us different, right? What are some of the things that would make our prayer life as we try to imitate Christ, what are some things that would hinder our uh, endeavor there? And um, then I'll close with a, uh, a encouraging passage that I thought of last night. Okay. So let's start with... Uh, at the beginning, right? When Jesus began his ministry um, at his baptism in Luke, uh, the third chapter, verse 21. Now it came about when all the people were baptized that Jesus also was baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy uh, Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came out of heaven. Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. So right from the beginning, Jesus prayed. Uh, and at choosing uh, the naming of the apostles, skip on up to uh, Luke 6, chapter tw or verse 12. Right. And it was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when the day came, he called his 12 disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles. So he had a, 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 a purpose. He knew he was going to select his disciples, so he prayed all night beforehand. And he did this at a mountain, so he went off to a mountain to do that. Okay. Uh, when Peter confessed, Luke 9. And verse 18. Verse 18. 
And it came about that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and, they, and uh, he questioned them, saying, what do the multitudes say that I am? And um, so he went out and he prayed alone, okay? He um, separated himself and prayed alone. At the transfiguration, about eight days after these sayings, it came about that he took along Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different and his clothes became white and gleaming. Um, then we'll skip up to Luke 22. And uh, verse 31, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. So he prayed and a prayer of intercession on behalf of Peter. And as I was studying this, uh, there, they also are, make the point that perhaps Jesus was praying, for, he mentioned Peter, but he could have been mentioning all of the disciples that perhaps Satan wanted to, you know, sift all of them, break them down, right? Uh, and um, that's really important to know that, that Jesus, he's, he's going to pray for us. He prayed for us. He prayed for them. I, th I think he would intercede for us, right? And, and so, um, yeah, we can, we need that, everything that we can get to, you know, because we're going to make mistakes and we're going to get, uh, you know, the roaring lion is out there. And um, so, hey, uh, that's, you know, Jesus didn't just say, uh, hey, he's going to, he asked to sift you like wheat. It kind of, by what he said, he's going to succeed. He's going to, it's going to work. He's going to get to you. But when you turn again, right, you can strengthen your brothers. There's, there's a lot in those three sentences that uh, can be very encouraging to us. Uh, even today. So we'll, uh, that was really, really a neat thing. Now in Luke uh, 22 and verse 41, um, and when he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if thou art willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but thy will, thine be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him, and being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. And, uh, you know, that was probably the, you know, the, the anticipation of the event, because Jesus knew everything that was going to take place. He knew what he was headed for. And uh, that anticipation that he's right at the tip just before these events are going to play out. And I think that uh, I know I can kind of relate because it's, it seems to me that the, the most difficult part of a, of like I used to go to Birmingham just about every other holiday. And it's an eight-hour drive. I used to make an 11-hour drive to Washington, D.C. without even thinking about it. But that was when I was young. Now that I'm older, I, I see just driving down Maricamp between 22nd Avenue and 
Forest High School, the craziness that takes place. And it doesn't matter whether it's the morning or it's in the afternoon on the way home. Some of these people are just, it's, you know, Mario go-kart racing. And it's nuts. But the anticipation of the drive is what, I, I just freak out. About a week before the drive, I start really stressing. I'm going to have to get out on that interstate. It's nuts, the anticipation. Now, once I get things going and I get on the interstate, well, then I'm trying to keep these crazy people away from and trying to maintain a bubble. So I'm thinking, I'm doing, I'm not just waiting for something. Waiting is the hardest part. Yeah, I think it is. And I think that's where Jesus found himself. That, and that's the anticipation of this is what's going to happen. And um, yeah, so I know the scale is completely different. But the emotions are there and the stress is certainly there. And it's good for us to know that Jesus had that stress. Absolutely. How did he handle it? He prayed, right? And um, so I, we'll come back uh, to some of those similarities um, and things that we can uh, learn from that in, in just a moment. But obviously, uh, certainly Jesus on the cross uh, prayed several times as well. Uh, in the 23rd chapter of Luke, in verse 46, uh, at the, so at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, when he was baptized, he prayed, and on the cross, uh, before the end, of the, he prayed. He said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. So he began his ministry uh, with prayer, and it ended with prayer. <clears throat> uh, there are prayers that Jesus uttered during his daily life. Um, Luke uh, 5.16, Luke 11.1, 1, um, Mark uh, 6.46, and John 12.27. Uh, um, he prayed when he was working some of his uh, miracles, and he expressed his concern for others in his prayers. And the example I gave of, of Simon, uh, Peter, and... Um, in that situation. Um, it was Christ's example in prayer that led his disciples to request that he teach them how to pray in Luke 11. 1. Uh, that's recorded for us. And it came about that while he was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his, his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is in, indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And um, he said, suppose one of you shall have a friend and shall go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me uh, from a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside, uh, he shall answer and say, do not bother me. The door has already been shut and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because, because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. And I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Now suppose one of uh, you fathers is asked by his son for a fish. 
He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he is... uh, If he has asked for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you know then, if if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, uh, There's a, uh, the importance of um, the disciples uh, asking Jesus how to pray. And I thought it's kind of interesting that they mention uh, how John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray. Um, so, hey, he did that for them. So, Jesus, why don't you do that for us? And, and we'll be like them in a way. It's kind of a a very human thing uh, to do. Um, And I think the little details like that um, help us relate to what is taking place, right? And um, uh, I think that's, I'm glad that's there. And that's the the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and God to to put those details in for us. So, the secret of Jesus' quiet confidence and deep spiritual fortitude was his unrelenting practice of finding deserted places for prayer and meditation. Uh, You know, and and we kind of touched on that going uh, to the mountain to pray, um, seeking out a place to be by himself or maybe taking only a few of the disciples with him. Um, His prayer life was varied, right? And um, I'll just go ahead and and get this. Uh, I think certainly there's the relationship, the praise and confession and prayer. And I thought there's kind of three things in Jesus' prayer life that I pulled out from it as I I studied it. And uh, what made Jesus different from us? Faith, uh, focus, and purpose. I think those are three things in Jesus' prayer life that really stand out to me. Um, And I think, obviously, faith is the bedrock principle upon which our whole uh, relationship with God is, is established. Uh, faith is, is, that is the, the foundation. Um, if we don't believe that God is who he is, okay, then we're not even going to consider it. I mean, consider the, the world. They are so lost. They haven't even got a clue it doesn't matter to them. It's foolishness. Everything that we're doing right now to a worldly person is just, it's foolish. Why even do it, right? There's no faith in there at all. There's no mechanism for belief. So uh, as it stands, right? So yeah, faith is everything. But, but here's the thing. You say, well, you know, one of the cop-outs, I think, for us is to say that, well, yeah, but he was Jesus. You know, of course he's going to have faith. Yeah, but you know what? Um, he had faith and he still prayed. He didn't take anything for granted with his relationship with God. Because God is worthy, right? God is worthy. He is who he is. He always has been and always will be. And, uh, you know, I read about um, all the things that we find out about uh, the universe and the creation and, and all of that. And it's like, no, it's, it's all of it's true. Um, I know Drew was, uh, Parks was mentioning uh, the scene in, in the Star Wars films where... Uh, 
they're getting ready to entomb Han Solo in, in that carbonite. You're freezing basically in a, a block of ice. And he says that famous line, uh, the Princess Leia says, I love you. And he says, I know, right? Which is really kind of a cool thing. But there's another line that Han Solo says in one of the more recent, not very good movies, but it's still impactful. Uh, he's meeting up the new hero. They meet Han and, and his buddy and, and the Millennium Falcon, if you follow this kind of stuff. But what he says to this aspiring Jedi is it's true, all of it. All of it's true. And he's seen it. He believes it. He knows it. And there's, it's there. It's as firm as the solidness of a planet. Right? And that's where we are here. That's what pulls us here. It's true. All of it's true. Jesus, the, the exodus out of Egypt, Moses, all of it's true. Every last bit of it is true. And that is, that is the faith that we need to have. Uh, and, and striving to get that faith. And that's why we come here and study the word, right? We examine it. And that is where our faith comes from. And I think the greater your faith the more effective your prayer life. And I think that's what we want, right? Is a more effective prayer life. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, because a lot of people, quote unquote, pray, right? A lot of people pray. That doesn't mean that God listens to their prayers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I really did, like you do. And I discovered 19 points concerning prayer. In other words, we could never get through this in a lot of study. But if somebody were to say to me, can you sum up prayer in a minute or two? That's all I got. Just, and you inspired what I'm going to say. God does not hear the prayers of the unrighteous. He only hears the prayers of the righteous, which means... How did we become righteous? We obeyed the gospel. Therefore, we can count on it that when we pray, he hears us. It's just like talking, I'm not going to say to your wife, but, you know, it's not like that. It's like talking to somebody who listens. Yes, sir. But the other factor Indeed. is, is the most important part is he only answers prayers according to his will. And when we find out that his will is to, uh, for us to be saved, therefore we can count on any prayer that we ask him for our salvation to maintain and stay within his guideline. He hears that. He'll give us that. He'll give us anything. Regarding other prayers, they may not be according to his will. Therefore, we don't get it because it could harm us. And the second most important thing about this is this. Why do the things happen to us that happen when we're praying? Because God causes all things to work together for our good, for those who are called according to his purpose and to those that love him. That's us. So if we're having problems, it's working towards our good. We have to believe that passage. And then we're, we can be comfortable with our prayer and everything because we know it's all for our good. Right. Well, now what you've said will get me from faith or faith to my next point, which was going to be focus. And I think when I uh, was reading about Jesus' prayers, the second thing that stood out to me was his focus. His ministry, right? His relationship to God, his relationship to his purpose. Um, and I'll get to purpose in a moment, but focus was the second one. So we've got faith, focus. Jesus was focused. There weren't any distractions. There were, wait, let me back up. There were a ton of distractions. But the distractions didn't 
cloud his focus on what his purpose was, what God's will was, right? So he stayed focused. The other thing, the third part is purpose. And it could be, okay, he's preparing to, to call the disciples. So he's the purpose. Let's focus on, on that purpose. Or it could be when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? The purpose. I'm, I'm in stress. Uh, there's anticipation of what is about to begin. And um, so the purpose, he focused on the purpose. And... Um, and as I look at, uh, okay, so that's Jesus, okay? What about us? Um, how does faith, focus, and purpose impact us in our prayer life, okay? Um, so I want to ask, what are some human qualities that interfere with our prayer life? Pride. Uh, give me an example. I want it the way I want it. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. I want it. I want it when I want it. Right. Yeah, what are some human qualities that we have that would uh, interfere with our prayer life? Now, I know it's, it's big. Um, like we've already hit on a couple of things. Pride, um, the selfishness perhaps. Uh, but I, as I was thinking about this, Jesus was focused. He had uh, purpose. And he had, obviously, the, the underwriting thing was his faith. So what are some things that would cause, I was thinking of it in terms of, of flying and drag, right? What slows an airplane down? What slows our airplane down with faith? What causes us to hindrances in our prayer life? Unbelief, faith, a lack of faith. Well, number one, faith. Yeah. You know, uh, the world just totally distracts us. I ain't got time to pray. I don't have an interest in prayer. I can't find time. I mean, Satan has distracted us with everything that you look at in this world. So, distraction. Right. And that's the first point that I had. Distractions of daily life. Um, you know... Readiness in the military is everything, right? And what does readiness mean? It means doing the mission, right? We spend all our time getting ready, getting prepared to do whatever our military task is, right? That's readiness. Everything, all the training is built on readiness. And what are things that would, distractions from that? I mean, there's all kinds. And uh, so then you think another one would be self-reliance, right? And that's what uh, I think I'd put Drew's comment in, in that category or that box about self-reliance. Um, because every day we spend our time doing things, right? Once the, the stuff starts, right, and the waiting is over, and we start doing things, we're engaging with the world. We're engaging in our world, right? And all those distractions take away from our focus and our purpose. It's very easy to just absolutely get distracted and fall back on these human qualities that are seemingly forced upon us, whether it's through commercials or through uh, athletics, which are, you know, athletics, that's a great endeavor. But there's a focus on, even with team, there's still a focus on self-performance, right? 
and doing your best and making your decisions, right? It's ingrained in us that, that self-reliance, right? I can do this. I can get through it. I can overcome this. And I think that subtle uh, worldly approach is a really devilish distraction for us and takes away from our focus on prayer the way Jesus focused on prayer. Well, now. There you go. Every coin has two sides. And, and there you go. That's the opposite side. So there's extremes in, in all this. Yes, sir. You know, isn't it true that anything we want in life, that we really want it, we pursue it really hard? Well, what about prayer? Do we really want it? Do we really pursue it? Do we have an interest in it? Uh, we can all answer that question from our own hearts. We're all individuals. We have different things that go on in our life. But the answer is, are you interested? Or yeah. Or right. Yeah. And, and uh, so Linnell said the opposite uh, of the self-reliance, um, the lack of confidence, the lack of, well, you know, and we may lack self-confidence, but see, with faith, it's not based on us. It's based on God. And so that's a shift in, in thinking that is really difficult to grasp if you're a human. Um, but we have Jesus' example, and even another great example is Paul. Uh, and Paul was able to have a very focused uh, prayer life, uh, I, I believe, as well. And he had the faith. It was built the same way that Jesus was built, if you will. Uh, but I think misguided intentions is a distraction. Our, our intentions may be decent, but they're, they're misguided because I think we start adding that component that, that you mentioned of God's will, right? And uh, how do our intentions in prayer line up with God's will, okay? And so our misguided intentions, um, discouragement, right? Uh, and I think discouragement can really be a hindrance to prayer uh, because we get these cliches in life, you know? And I am, I'm a user of cliches, you know, head them off at the path. I get the humor in it now, but look, we use cl cliches or tools, but sometimes they are cliches and they're not good. And I think one of them would be, uh, it leads to a mentality. Um, well, I've tried everything else. I guess I'll try prayer, right? I mean, gee whiz. I mean, you're kind of defeated before you even start with that. The other one is, uh, uh, there was a book on a wing and a prayer, you know? I'm on a wing and a prayer. No, that's not it at all. It, it, it's, it changes, it takes our focus off of faith and belief that, you know, and, and it takes off our lining up with God's will in the first place, right? We're way off the glide path here. We're straying way off. So no, um, we have to, uh, it's not easy, I guess is what I'm trying to express with this part of the lesson today. Um, it's not easy. Um, and then the whole cop out that, well, yeah, Jesus did what he was Jesus. But right, but he's our example. So we need to build, and this is my opinion, we need to build our, our prayer life the way Christ built his, okay? And it starts with faith and focus and prayer and overcoming the distractions of daily life, right? And that's the challenge. And maybe that's where 
a little bit more of our focus should be uh, is on um, that part of it, overcoming the distractions. Yes, sir. Right. Right. And I think that's the, the basis for our approach is, um, you know, I had some, some bad habits and we were talking about this in the small group and um, I think it was the same lesson that uh, we talked about prayer, that we talked about uh, changing a habit, right? And um, it's not good enough to just stop doing something that was not good. It, you have to replace that with something. And so when I, I, I guess I had one of these, it's such an educator thing to say, I had an aha moment. <sighs> Anyways, let's, um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so I had an aha moment, and I was like, you know, if I, if I line things up the way God wants me to line this up, that's going to, and, and it did, it worked out, because I replaced what was bad with the way God wanted me to do things. And so, you know, hey, when I saw that that worked, I'm like, now all of a sudden I'm an evangelist. Hey, you really need to do this. This really helps. You know, and I know because I just did this, right? That's the great. So isn't that the way that, that God likes to have you do things is to believe in him, do things the way he wants, right? Get that line up with his will and then uh, see that it works. And now all of a sudden, you want to evangelize about it. I'm teaching this class today. But no, I'm, I don't want to make light, but I do want to make the point that um, the focus, the, uh, the faith and, and purpose, is, and, um, you know, it is, we're going to need to pray to avoid the distractions that we encounter, right? Um, and I, I, does anyone have any other comments as we kind of roll this up? Yes. Right. Absolutely. And the one thing that I kind of didn't get to, but it's certainly on the, uh, in the lesson, was um, the publican and the, uh, and the, the other guy, the, the poor, the beggar, and their prayers. And um, yeah, I mean, the one guy is completely humble and it's, I, I'm just lucky just to be able to talk to you this, right? And that's where uh, the, the humility in, go, in establishing the relationship um, that Jody had mentioned, right? It's, and that's a place, that's the starting place for faith is getting on your knees and just begging forgiveness. So thank you. Um, I just got